All right, to watch this video for Monday, July 2nd. If you were in the room on Friday, um, I got, I lost my internet, but I only partially lost my internet. It was really weird. I, I couldn't get back in the chat room. I couldn't get uh, to my own website, but I could get to other websites and uh, doing a little research, it, there was some massive Comcast outage, but you would think an outage would mean I'm completely out, but it just meant I couldn't reach some sites. Um, and TradeStation, my trading platform went down on my end, but most people were fine. So it was kind of a Florida, there was an East Coast, Jersey area, I don't know. Anyway, that's why I disappeared on you early on Friday, but had my best day in a couple weeks before losing internet. So teamwork's been fantastic. I'm going to go into the watch list for Monday here real quick. I want to show a couple things. Um, I like to share screenshots in these videos. This was one of them from ABIL on Friday. Had the initial pop. If you watched the video Thursday night, ABIL was on our bounce play watch list. So it takes off out of the gate early. This uh, I think this was the opening five minute candle right here. And I, I never chase. So I, I, I say to myself, well, I'm going to watch and see if it gives a setup. Then it kind of comes down starts to curl back up so you kind of picture a little flag there i don't have the lines drawn um so i made the call in chat there's a screenshot of it 785 idea 765 stop which was a trigger right about there and it ended up going to um man i think 905 dollar 20 move in our favor on 20 cents risk that didn't get stopped out uh, at least not before it hit 905 uh, i made i didn't take it big and i made over a thousand dollars on the trade um but a good example of just why we want to keep recent high flyers on the list. Um, after I got busted out of chat because of my internet, um, I got this email Friday afternoon, which uh, made my made my whole weekend. Um, look at the quarter one of our members had. Uh, April they made nine, almost ten grand. May ten grand, and June twenty one thousand. Absolutely love, love, love seeing people uh, in our chat room doing that well. And uh, one more thing, where was it here? Uh, they were talking in our chat room about our course. And it's pretty cool when people that have taken our course just start telling other people who haven't taken it, uh, posting nice comments. I'm not gonna read them, but you can uh, freeze frame it if you wanna read them. But some really nice comments from members that have taken the course, actually pushing it to people that haven't. And that's way better than paying somebody to give you a testimonial, because that's people just saying, hey, we took it and we loved it. Wayne and I are really proud of it. So. Um, uh, and when I'm done with the video, click below. There is a link to all of our free day trading webinars. A lot of good stuff there, and it's all free material. Also, a couple uh, July 4th special offers down below. Here's what I'm watching for Monday. VVPR had this huge move back here. Had a nice move on Thursday, then gapped up on Friday, popped, and then reversed. Um, whenever I see this setup, we have a big green candle, then the gap, and a red candle, and they both close about the same area two days in a row. Um, it's hard to be long or short biased, but I do want to keep it on a chart because in a little bit over a session, in other words, the full session on Thursday and then the gap up and initial pop on Friday, you had a move from 146 to 333. So that's over a double, right? So we want to keep that one. And it's getting a little bit of extra volume too. So we want to keep that one on watch, especially when you look at what it did this day, a um, little low, probably a little over a month ago. 145 to 669 on an intraday basis. As a day trader, that is a, it's not like a clean chart, but it means, hey, there could be some money available um, on Monday. SPCB, I think this is an Israeli stock, but it had nice volume and closed pretty strong. See, it gives us a follow through setup. Remember, I'm in cash every night. Um, so I'm just looking for ways to make money on, on at this point on Monday. So GBR had the gap up and sold off. And, and if you look at that, if you'd have told me the next day this was going to take out this high, I wouldn't have believed you. Um, you almost never see that. Now we'll see. We'll see a strong. Let me try that again. We'll see a strong green candle become completely erased the next day. But it's pretty rare that you see a gap up and an ugly close take out the highs the next day. So this is a uh, small, low-priced oil and gas play. So I want to watch them all again. You'll see a few more on the list as I go through the list. Um, but I'm also going to watch this one. It's uh, what we call stupid extended, you know, way away from the moving averages. Um, and if it rips, I, I doubt there'll be a low risk setup in it, but who knows, there might be. But we can also look to some sympathy plays like PED. PED had this huge move, then the gap up, then the red day. And then we actually caught a, um, well, I, I didn't catch a trade in this one. Jane called a trade in this one on Monday, um, right here through the red to green. And sometimes a nice trade can be as simple as you ready for this? Simple as a recent high flyer going red to green in the morning. Um, and that's exactly what PED did. 
Uh, I was looking at another chart when this thing triggered, but uh, Jane put this out in chat, which just means through the open, 236 right here. Uh, these are five minute candles. So if you get long on the red to green through the open 236, within that same five minute candle, it's at 305 and actually went to 309, which is a very nice percentage gain in a short period of time. So nothing tricky about that setup, um, but I do want to keep this one on watch. It's kind of a weird, you know, weird chart with the red candle here and then the kind of a topping tail and a red candle here. But the low priced oil plays get going. This is certainly one to watch. HTZ I had on bounce watch on Friday, no trades in it. Um, but I do like it if it gets down near this recent low near 14 for an intraday reversal. So I just threw that one back on the list. Dry ships, another red day, no trades in it on Friday, but had a nice move back here and it's come down on lower volume into what we call the buy zone between the eight and the 20 day moving average. So I want to watch that one for a potential bounce again on Monday. XBIO, crazy move from $1.50 to almost nine in a few days. And now we're three days lower on declining volume. I had to pause the video for a phone call. So I'm not sure exactly what my last sentence was. But anyway, this has come back down on declining volume right into that uh, buy zone. Um, it only traded 490,000 on Friday after, you know, almost 10 million a few days before that but still a pretty good candidate for a bounce. We'll see. The market's been, uh, these low price, low float stocks have been really pretty lucrative lately. So uh, until they stop working, we're going to keep watching them. Um, CLDC, kind of like XBIO, right? You had the big move, topping tails, but now we're back in that buy zone between the eight and the 20 day. Um, so we'll want to watch that one for a potential low risk setup. And a couple more. CEI, one of the low priced oil places. It's a weird chart, right? Um, it went from 25 cents to the very next day, $1.80, which is insane. Um, and I think, by the way, I'll go back to PED. I think PED started all this with the low priced oils moving from 37 cents in one day to 279 and the next day to almost 450. So, um, but they might just catch on fire again. I do like this one because it made such a nice move. Um, it's a weird looking chart. It certainly looks bearish when you glance at it as a trader, you see the pop. Then the secondary pop on the next day that had this topping tail and then a red day. So, you know, it looks like it's just going to come all the way back down. But if it's going to turn, it should do it hopefully on Monday. So certainly worth keeping on watch. And then GEVO, I do not love this. All right. Um, but this is crazy. It went from 442, the low this day on the gap up. Ready for this? To 2474 intraday the next day. And now it's completely round tripped and actually and then some. Um, so... Everyone who got long this for this whole fiasco is underwater. So that's why I don't like it. But at the same time, I would never think uh, to short this down here. So I don't know if I'll trade it at all, but I'll remind you about GBR and how crazy this market is. GBR had this crazy intraday reversal and closing at its lows. And then the next day took out this whole day's high. So that's kind of fresh in traders' brains. And then that brings me back to GEVO. Um, if this puts in a narrow range and then breaks to the upside, this might get a little squeeze after what it did back here, right? I mean, shorts have round tripped this thing. So what, what's left on the table? Um, so I am kind of leaning long on this, but I certainly like these a lot less when they've completely round tripped, all right? Having said all that, I'm gonna leave it alone. Again, links uh, below here, free day trading webinars. There's a lot of free content. There's a link to our 4th of July special, link to a chat room special as well. Um, Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Uh, quick reminder, Monday, uh, full day. Tuesday, I think, is a half day. Wednesday, the market's closed. Thursday and Friday, normal days. But I expect uh, low volume all week. On the days that it is open, I expect low volume all week. So, you know, maybe cut your position size back and we'll kind of get a better feel of how the week's going to go after we see what happens on Monday. All right, I'm done babbling. Enjoy the rest of your uh, weekend. We'll see everybody on Monday.